What's up, YouTube? For today's project, we got these Fragment Travis Scott Jordan 1 Lows. They're in beat up condition. We got a lot of work. The worst thing about them is the back. There's tons of deep scratches all around those logos. We got to go in and fix that. Not just that, the rest of the shoe is really dirty. We got to get the shoe a proper deep clean, reshape these cooked toe boxes, and do some other touch ups. We got a lot of work ahead of us, so let's get started. Before we get started, right now is a great chance to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Today we're going to be using our Rejuvenator Essential Shoe Cleaning Kit. We're going to give the shoe a proper deep clean inside and out. Usually I would put the shoe in the washing machine, however, this shoe is not that dirty. Plus, I wouldn't recommend drenching the shoe in water or solution because that blue can bleed onto the stitching. Same thing with the tongue. To get this process started, we're going to take out the laces and insoles. Laces are out. For this specific pair, we're going to leave the insoles inside. The glue is in there pretty good. If I try to take out the insoles, there's a good chance I'm going to rip the foam. We don't want that. Luckily for these fragments, the insides are not that dirty. There's just a lot of hair and debris. Using a brush and compressor will take all that stuff out. The rest of the insides of the shoes look really good. The white interior is still white. There is no tough stains on the blue. So for the insides, I'm not even gonna bother cleaning it. It doesn't need it. Plus, I don't wanna oversaturate the shoe and potentially cause bleeding onto the stitching. Let's keep it moving. Next, we're gonna insert our shoe trees so we can start reshaping these toe boxes on these sneakers. Once the shoe is all cleaned up and dried, these toe boxes are gonna look a lot better just by using the shoe trees. Next, we're going to grab our 4 ounce bottle of solution and squirt 2 squirts inside a bowl of water. All we need is 2 squirts, this stuff is highly concentrated. This cleaning is going to be pretty straightforward. We're going to start off by using our soft bristle brush to break down the grime and dirt on the uppers and the tongues. We just want to stay away from this blue area. We do want to clean it, but we don't want to oversaturate it. Good to go using the soft bristle brush. The uppers look great all around. All those stains that was on the white leather came out nicely. And the blue, there was no bleeding at all. On the tongue specifically, there was a lot of deep stains from the laces. On this specific one, there was some blue stains from the blue wax laces. I got the majority of those stains off using the soft bristle brush and a lot of scrubbing. However, there's still some marks. Hopefully, the VIX 2000 can remove those. Next step, we're going to be using our stiff bristle brush to clean up these midsoles and outsoles. We're not going to be using the medium bristle brush on the shoe simply because it doesn't need it. Let's go ahead and clean up these soles so we can move on to the laces. The deep clean process is complete. All that's left to do is put them outside under the Arizona sun and let them dry for a couple hours. In the meantime, these laces are really dirty. 
They were originally waxed. Later on in this video, I'm gonna try to re-wax them. However, throughout the entire lace, there's a lot of black stains. It's not gonna be easy to get these marks off. So we're gonna start off by putting them in our leftover water and solution so we can start breaking down all the grime. After a couple hours, we got the shoe fully dried. Thanks to our rejuvenated products, we got the shoe nicely cleaned up, uppers look good, the stitching on the midsoles is back to its original cream color, and the best part about this cleaning is the tongues. Originally, we had some pretty bad marks, black marks over here and blue marks. For the most part, all that stuff came out nicely. Now the next step you gotta do is put these shoes inside the VIX 2000. It is the end of the day here at Rejuminator. Before we wrap it up, I'm gonna put these shoes inside the indoor setup, let it sit overnight. Tomorrow morning we'll pull them out. There really isn't much oxidation on these sneakers. However, those UV rays is gonna help widen up the leather, remove any small stains that's left on the tongue, and also if there's any oxidation on the midsoles, remove that naturally. We're not gonna be using any Rejuminator Sora Vive. We're just gonna put them inside, let them sit overnight, and we'll take them out in the morning. So far, so good. We got the shoe out of the VIX 2000 after letting them sit overnight. Not a crazy big difference. However, after the cleaning, if you do have an indoor setup, it's always beneficial to put the shoes inside to help wire up any areas on the sneaker. Next, we're gonna focus on the scratches on the back area and on the black as well. Luckily for me, these scratches aren't super deep, so we're not gonna be using leather filler. However, before we start painting, we gotta get these areas nice and smooth. For this process, we're gonna be using three different grits of sandpaper. We're gonna start out with 800 grit, move on to 1000, and then 1200 grit. The 800 is for the rougher areas. Once we're done with that, we'll move on to 1000 to get it smooth, and we'll finish off with the 1200 to get it as smooth as possible. Then we'll lay down our paint. Sanding is complete, we got the leather nice and smooth. Before I can move on to the paint job, we gotta mix some paint. We gotta match it to the fragment blue. I went into my Angelus paint box and gathered the closest colors to this blue. I got neon blue, light blue, blue. I got light like as well. I don't know if I'm gonna use that color, it's just in case I need to add a purple hue to it as well. I got some white in case I need to lighten up the color and some military blue. This is probably the closest blue to the fragments, however, it's still pretty off. We're gonna start there and add all these colors. We don't wanna start off with too much paint. Little by little is the best way to go about it. Got the perfect blue mix, however, I ended up using a completely different set of colors. So I added some sapphire blue, but it was too on the vibrant blue side. So I brought in some light gray to eliminate some of that, but I did too much and eliminated too much of that blue. So I brought in some more blue, but I was kind of in the same situation I was, but I was a lot closer. That's where the red and the black came in. Red plus blue equal purple. That's how I created that purple hue, just by a little bit. And then I added some black, a couple of drops to darken it up. Finish it off with some duller to eliminate the shine. And between all of those colors and the duller, we got the perfect mix. Sounds a little complicated. I might have overdone it. Maybe by eliminating some of these colors, I can still get the perfect tone. But these are all the colors I used. Now let's lay down the paint with some small angular brushes. Paint job is almost complete. Everything looks good so far. Color match is on point. We did a good job of not getting any paint on the black logos. Now the next step you gotta do is some sanding. Now I am gonna go back with some 2000 grit sandpaper to sand down the areas that I just painted so I can get those as smooth as possible. I'll go back with one more coat of paint and then we'll move on to the finisher.
Next, we're gonna tape up everything that we just painted so we could go outside and spray some matte finish to protect the paint job. Back panels are complete. Between sanding, painting, sanding, and painting, and laying down the matte finish, these look almost perfect. You can't see any of the original scuffs or scratches. Now over in the front, we still gotta go in and touch up the big black scratch. We already sanded it down. For this, we're gonna tape off everything but this area so we can lay down the black paint through the airbrush. All done with the black paint, I laid down a couple of coats, same exact thing as the back. I grabbed some 2000 grit sandpaper, sanded it down so you get it nice and smooth, laid down one more final coat of black paint, went outside and sprayed some matte finish. Now it's time to remove the tape. On to the final step, the laces. We got these looking really clean. After I let them sit for about 24 hours inside the water and solution, I gave them a good scrub using my hands. After that, I put them in the washing machine to fully flush out any grime. Then I put them in the indoor setup for another few hours to finish removing any of the stains that was left on the shoelace. Originally, the shoelace had a bunch of black marks from how it was laced up. Luckily, we got all those marks off. However, when these laces were brand new, they did have wax, but after all the wear and tear and washing them, they no longer have any wax. So we gotta put it back using some paraffin wax. Simply what we're gonna do is rub it onto this block quite a few times until it gets nice and frosty. After that, we're gonna be using this little iron to melt it into the lace. All right guys, we're all done with the restoration of these Fragment Travis Scott Jordan 1 Lowe's. Originally, these shoes were just not presentable at all. They were dirty, creased up, but the back of the shoes were the worst part. They were covered in scratches and scuffs, but as you can see now, back to its original blue color, you can't even tell those scratches were even there. Besides the cleaning and reshaping these sneakers using our rejuvenated products, I showed you guys how to repaint the backs, repaint the black, and of course, bring back the wax on the laces. Easy stuff, you guys. Anybody can do this at home. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is Vic Almighty. I'll catch you guys next Monday. See you guys.